All right, let's get the monitor set up. All right, waiting for people to come in. Okay. Maybe some <clears throat> some special, a little special, a little later in the week. That'll probably be an extended thing. It'll take a while to do it. That's weird. Why is that black? Hey Bruce, give me a sound check, buddy. <clears throat> All right, let's do some wet on wet painting today. Peter's skirt. There it is. <coughs> All right. Now. All right, guys. Let's paint a little landscape here today. Also, it's a question and answer time. So if you got a Billy, hey Billy, how are you, buddy? Give me a sound check. You guys hear me okay? Bruce, I'm doing pretty good. <coughs> I'm a little under the weather the last couple days, but I'm, I'm all right. I'm going to pick up some glare off of this. I just varnished a bunch of paintings last week, and i got a bunch more to do this week. But All right, man. All right, let's paint something. Well, let's see. Let's get some liquid white. Let's get some liquid white out. Stir it up a little bit. You guys have any questions? <coughs> any painting questions you want to ask me? If I know the answer, I'll tell you. And if I don't, I'll tell you that too. I'm easy like that. <laughs> All right, so we, we uh, got a call from our sponsors. Uh, when was it? Thursday, my wife got a call. So we will be doing the art show here in Jefferson Town in the summer. We've done it. This is what is this? Is our fourth, third year? This is our third year to do it. <coughs> we sold uh, 22 paintings last year. Or was it? No, no, no. We sold 21 paintings last year. Sold 22 paintings just a couple of weeks ago. So, all right, let's get to it then. Let's do some things. We use a one-inch brush. Let's put some liquid white on the canvas here. Hey, Ray. Go Ray, Ray so nice. And if you guys don't follow him, you should, because he is so talented. So talented. Let's put some liquid white on here. <coughs> we'll blend some stuff around a little bit. Scrub it in because we don't need a lot.
Hey Ray, how you doing buddy? How are things in California? Hey. Looks like maybe you guys got a little bit of rain. Muggy down in Florida. Yeah. We've got rain coming in on... Uh, I don't know if it's coming in on Wednesday or if it's coming in on Thursday. <coughs> it's coming in one of those days. <coughs> what do you do with my lemonade? Oh, it's over there. Okay. So I have no idea, as usual, what I'm going to paint today. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as we go. Got my nitrile gloves on today and kind of warm my hands up. Yeah, let's do with a little bit. Of, let's go a little push, Prussian blue. That's good, man. You guys, because you guys have been in a drought for like a long time, so it's probably good. The Lord giving you some rain out there. All right, let's put a little bit of sky up here. La, 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 la. This is a 12 by 16 economy canvas. It's got three coats of gesso on it. I'm going to do some kind of Bob Rossi today, maybe. La, la, la. probably paint over a lot of that. Alright, okay, let's pull some water in. I don't know where there's going to be water. There's going to be water down here somewhere, I'm sure. I just don't know where. It don't really matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's going to be down here somewhere. Put it away. <clears throat> so we're home now pretty much for the summer, I reckon. After our trip to Virginia. Bruce, where do you where do you live? I thought you, I thought you lived in the northeast. Maybe I, I might have you confused that way. Alright, let's just blend this out a little bit. I want to cover all that up in the middle there. I'm going to do something with that. Maybe. We'll see. Alright, let's just kind of blend this guy up. I like to use this little round, wispy bit of whispering blending. A bit of an X stroke. Kind of breaks up the X stroke. And helps with the wispy clouds a little bit. It helps create some motion in the sky. I don't like a dead sky too much in my paintings. That's kind of cool. It kind of came out okay. Kind of go one way direction and turn and go the other. Of course, you could do this all day and then you just blend everything. You know, everything would just kind of blend out. Ooh, okay. All right, so it's looking a little stormy there. Actually, I guess because it's Prussian blue, darker blue instead of phthalo blue. Yep, just tiny little circles. Tiny little circles. Hey, Diane. How are you all? How are you doing today? Everybody say hello so we know you're in here. Diane, you won another award since we've seen you last? I know you've been racking them up lately. Pretty awesome. Alright, I don't think we're going to mess with this guy too much more. Let's, let's put some mountains in here, though. Let's get some... No, not that. 
Get a little bit of mountain mixture. Make a little bit of a mixed up kind of a mountain range today, maybe. Maybe. I feel, I feel kind of mountainy. Since we got all these California cats in here, we'll do something a little mountainy. Why not? Let's do, uh, let's get some titanium white. Let's use this tube up. I'm just gonna mix up some light, lighter gray to start with. I probably need more. I'm gonna need more titanium white than that, but that's okay. I'm just getting a little bit of mountain mixture, a little bit of titanium white. Mix that up. Need more than that though. I need like double that at least. I'm just gonna put a kind of a far off mountain range in here to start with. Let's do that. <laughs> Maybe like over this way. Wow, oh, it's, it's almost the same color. Almost, but not quite. We'll pull it on back here. Make a decision on the I think we'll end this mountain range right there. Alright, let's set that aside. Let's work on this a little bit. Getting your pool and yard ready. Hey Linda. <laughs> I wear gloves sometimes. I, I, I have a Sometimes I get arthritis in my hands. I, I wear my gloves quite a bit. And then sometimes, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. When I think of it, I do it. But, all right, we're just gonna kind of make this, mount, smooth this ridge out a little bit like that. And we're gonna push that mountain behind that one. Maybe like, I don't know if that's even gonna show up there, that one there before we get done, but we'll see. All right. All right, let's put a little bit of mist in there. Uh, maybe put a little bit of highlight on that. Let's put some highlight on that. Let's go back to my knife. Pick up some titanium white. Pick a side. Let's pick. Let's pick this side. This titanium white's pretty thick. I drained most of the oil off of it a couple of weeks ago when I opened the tube. I like it to be thick when I'm putting it on with a knife. It doesn't matter so much when I put it on with um, like a filbert, but, but it does help. Emily Jean! Hello, girl. Monday's over. Yay, art time. Emily Jean, a.k.a. the Little Painter Girl. If you guys don't watch her, you are missing out. Man, she is like so talented. She's so talented. <laughs> She thinks she's not, but she actually is. She's very talented. She's my one of my bestest buddies. She is. She's awesome. That's the only thing. That's the only way I know how to say it. She's just awesome. If you don't watch her, you should. Make sure you tune in. Little painter girl, all one word. She's painting it. She's in the process of painting a bear picture. She kind of honored me by putting a stump in there that I suggested, but which of course she made it cooler than what I had originally suggested. But anyway, all right. 
And I don't know how many, how much of those mountains are going to get covered up here, but we're going to put some fog in here in a minute. Let's do this. As a matter of fact, let's just do that now. Let's get some more titanium light out. You know it's true, man. You know it's true. You get more on the walls. <laughs> ah, yeah, I got that wall over there. I don't know exactly when I got all that stuff on the walls over there, but I got quite a bit of it. I noticed, hey Emily, I noticed the other day when you were painting that, uh, and the reason I noticed it was because I kept trying to wipe it off my iPad. I thought it was a spot on my iPad, but there's a spot on the wall right behind your uh, painting. <laughs> looks like, looks like you got some paint on the wall there, young lady. All right, let's go with, I want to do something a little different here with today with this kind of, kind of, kind of. So we're going to switch colors. We're going to try to use that to push off into the background. <laughs> Barely see her. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. The reason it's so funny for you is I don't know. Hey, Marilyn. She's because the painting is because a couple of bears. They're so cute. Plus, on Emily Jean's channel, you get to you get to meet her painting partner, uh, Militia, her cat. She's awesome. <laughs> if you don't believe her, you just ask. Ask Militia, she'll tell you. She'd be glad to tell you. <laughs> She's a mess. I think somehow, somewhere, somebody spoiled that cat. I think. All right, let's, let's put a little bit of fog in here. Just a little bit. I'm going to tap this in here with a one-inch brush. For now. I'm kind of sticking out here in the middle because we're going to put some more mountain ranges in here. I don't know how many. We'll find out, I guess, as we go. So I'm going to clean all my brushes and recondition them. I ain't got no room to talk. You know how big a, you know how big a pest my cat is. I need, I got, you're my painting buddy. <laughs> all right, let's put another mountain range in here. Let's do something different though. Let's bring it out off the board a little bit. Let's, uh. Uh, let's do it with a filbert brush instead of a knife this time. Let's start off with a dark color here. All right, now this mountain range is going to be kind of bigger. So let's just kind of let's kind of sketch it in here first. It's going to be free with the brush here. Maybe we'll like maybe another make another ridge right there somewhere. All right. I'm just kind of sketching this in here. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. That looks pretty good. Alright, let's see. Let's kind of... <laughs> I'm going to pull that one in. Maybe we can squeeze a third mountain range in here before we're done. Making this one a little bit bigger. And then we're just going to pull it up like that. All right. Am I self-taught? Um, well, yeah. Well, no. I guess, sort of. I don't know. Let me qualify all of that. Um, I went to a Bob Ross class three years ago, last month, and fell in love with painting because at that particular time, uh, I had gone to art to uh, take an art class in college with my wife, and the teacher informed me in the middle of the semester when she kept using me as a bad example. And I said, "Why? What the heck? I mean, why? Are you, you say there's no wrong way to do this, but you're saying the way I'm doing it's wrong." And she goes, "Well, I'm sorry, son. You just don't have any talent." It's like, oh. And to tell you the truth, I believed her. So <clears throat> I went to a Bob Ross class, class, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah." We're, we don't want to hear that. Um, 
sit down, pull up a chair, let's go. So we, I painted my first painting. I couldn't stop painting after that. I just couldn't stop. So, um, it's, it's kind of been going on since then. So, I've, been, I've painted about 315 paintings, mostly. I've been to, a, uh, so I've been to two Bob Ross classes and um, a Brandon Thomas art class over in Lexington, Kentucky. It was Billy's cousin, I think, if I remember correctly. And uh, everything else I learned from videos and just painting. I've painted 300 and some odd paintings. All right. Let's put some more. Let's do some more of this now. All right, so this part here, we're going to leave it a little dark. But uh, you know what? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Let's put something different in here. Let's put... Tell you what. Let's do something a little bit different with that fringe. We're going to add some color to this. Add more color to this. So let's take some... Uh, yellow ochre. We'll mix it with a little bit of dark sienna. We'll mix that into this pile of paint I got here, which is the blue. We'll mix all that together. Create another color, a kind of custom color. Yeah, that looks kind of neat. All right, let's put another color on this mountain. Let's just put some extra colors on this mountain. All right, I think we'll be a little bit lighter than that, maybe. But still a little bit dark. I want it to still be a little bit dark because this is the back side of the mountain, right? This is the reverse shadow. And then let's see, let's do it like, let's pull some of that down this way. Any other questions? Man, I'd, I'd love answering questions. I would be glad to answer any questions y'all have. Let's kind of make this darker, right? darker, 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 like that. Kind of pull that down a little bit like that. Create that contrast in between. So, you know, all those, all those, so anyway, yeah, uh, I guess I'm more or less self-taught, but I've been to a couple of classes. I painted a few paintings in class. Hmm. And then I've painted hundreds of paintings outside of class. I teach class. Um, so far, I've mostly been teaching special needs type students, whether they're injured. I have a student who's a really good artist um, who had a stroke. So he can only paint with his off hand. And he just wanted to learn how to paint. So he paints with me. Yeah, on one-on-one, -on -one, he's, he's really good. His name is Ed. He's awesome. Ed's great. And it's, it's fulfilling for me to paint. And then i uh, got a few other people that have the same kind of a sort of, kind of a story. That, um, they paint with me. I paint, you know. All it takes, though, is for somebody to tell me that they sure wish they could paint, but they know they never could. That just, just gets me going. That was, kind of, that was kind of neat. All right, let's do something else, though. Let's take the... We're still kind of mixing on the same pile of paint over here, but put a little bit of that to the side. Let's brighten this back side up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. Heavy influence. Nick... Nick uh, Hankins. If you guys don't follow Nick, he's a CRI from... Bob Ross Inc. He's a, he's a really good artist. I, follow, I used to follow him on Twitch before he went to work for Bob Ross Inc. directly. So he doesn't teach on Twitch anymore, but he used to be very good to watch. And there's so many good artists out there. Marion Dutton. Marion Dutton's had a big influence on me. She's just, she's something else. Emily's had a big, big influence on me too. I can't paint like her, but she gives me some pretty cool ideas about things I can paint, so I like to watch her paint because her painting style is so different than mine. All right, I'm just gonna tap some, tap some fog in here. I may switch up to a one-inch brush here in a second. We're just tapping some titanium white along the base of these mountains here. So. Let's talk about paintings, philosoph painting philosophies a little bit. First of all, I guess, let's think about different things this week, about different things we paint. 
I know, I can't draw. I can't draw for... Uh, you should have seen the sketch I did last week. I did a sketch last week that I then turned around and painted. The painting was a thousand times better. Of course, I, I think I took 90 seconds to draw the sketch because <laughs> I'm not a sketcher. I can't, I'm not a sketcher. No, not in the least. I'm not a sketcher. If sketching was, if you had to paint it, if you had to sketch it first, I would just not paint. I reckon. All right. Let's just blend that out a little bit. Maybe we'll fluff some of that up a little bit. Just a little bit. Three airs and some air there. As the old saying goes. Rub that brown off of there. All right. Um, how long do you wait to varnish your paintings? A year. One year. Exactly. They say that somewhere between six months and a year, you can start varnishing them. So I just go to the long side of that because I don't want to have to... If you varnish too early, um, it'll crack your paint right off of your canvas. So... Uh, so I just wait. I just wait. It's not that long. I got I got a, tons of paint, tons of canvases. See, let me kind of move this where you can see. See all of those canvases? They're waiting to be varnished. So, <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of varnishing to do. I've got some done though. I got to get ready for the art show though. So I've really been kind of working at it fairly steadily. I got five more ready to do this week. So, hey Rosalie, I like doing art shows. Um, because I like mostly, I'm really crazy when, I, I love for kids to come, kids that are artists, young people. But people, um, I think the reason that people buy as many paintings from me as they do, because most of the time when people are buying paintings from me, they buy them when they're watching me paint. I think they like that. I think people like to, I, I know I used to love to watch people paint because to me it was like incredible. I just... It's kind of that way when I watch other artists paint, even today. Nellie's painting. I'm just <laughs> mystified how she does what she does. Even though I paint, I'm just still just mystified the way she does things. All right, so let's see. I'll tell you what, I was going to put start putting some landscape in, but I'll tell you what, let's try to squeeze another mountain range in here. One more time. Let's put one more mountain range. Let's take um, I like brown. And some of this mountain mixture. Let's put let's put a, a smaller mountain range. Like let's just kind of sketch it in here and see what we got in here. So who who uh, can you still varnish? Your, oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Matter of fact, um, on YouTube. Recently, I've been watching a guy called, uh, I think his yeah, channel's called Baumgartner Restorations. He, he, um, he's a, he does restorations of, of uh, paintings that are like really old, like old master type paintings. And uh, he, uh, I'm going to kind of cut into the mountain right there with that steep little peak right there. Let's, let's tell you what, let's run it over like that. Don't want it to look too volcanish. He, um, the first thing he does is take all the varnish off. Well, no, that's not the first thing, but he, one of the things he does is he takes all the varnish off, and um, he, before he gets done, he puts new varnish back on. And so, you know, he's, he's putting varnish on paintings that are 300 and 400 and 500 years old. So, yeah, you can do it after the, but you can't do it earlier. And the reason, the reason that, I, that there's a delay is because you're waiting for um, the paint to oxidize. This oil paint oxidizes super slow compared to like a acrylics. I mean acrylics are actually plastics, right? So they they dry pretty fast. And once they're dry, they're pretty much cured. Whereas oil paint, not only does it have to dry to the touch, it has to cure. So and you know the solvents have to so you know get these out and it's quite a bit of solvents in just about every kind of paint. So Man, you guys, you guys, Anthony will be back when Anthony's ready, y'all. <laughs> y'all need to let that guy go. Let him have some rest. All right, 
So let's let's put a little bit of we'll come back with some more of it. Uh, let's see. Let's put, I tell you what, let's do something a little bit different even again. Let's make a make a color with some paints gray. So can we pull some paints gray out here and mix it with this blue? We'll kind of make a a grayish color for this. There we go. Yeah, kind of this blue-gray color like that. If you're looking for a really good online teacher, um, Marion Dutton is really good. Maz Art is her channel on YouTube. Plus, she has an online school that really is very economical for anybody can pretty much afford to go. Um, I think it's like $13 for a lesson or something like that. It's really, there's nothing you can't paint when you're painting with her. She does such a good job. All right, put some, so we put a, this kind of dark color. We're going to add some more dark to that in a minute. Put some snow here on the slopes. I'm going to run out of titanium white, though. So, I think I said on my last video, my the paintings that I seem to sell the most are paintings that have 13 levels of depth or more. People like depth in their paintings, I guess. I do. The paintings that I like the best that I have are actually pretty, pretty, pretty deep. Otherwise, they kind of look two-dimensional and flat. The more the more layers you can create, the better off you are. So. So we're just putting a small bead of paint on this knife. Hang on a second, I'll wipe it off and I'll show it to you again. So we're just whipping up some mountains here. I'll tell you something else I think is kind of interesting. Is um, I guess, I don't know if it was the last time, last stream that we did, or if it was the one before that, but recently. Um, somebody made a comment. I didn't see it till after I was done. Which is good, because it probably would have aggravated me. <laughs> but somebody made a comment. They're like, you're painting too slow. You should paint faster. I don't, I don't have all day to sit here. You know, I just, that's kind of weird to me. Painting is a... Uh, experience. I mean, it, it's something that you should be... <clears throat> if you don't enjoy it, I don't know why you would bother to do it. And if you do enjoy it, I don't know why you'd bother to hurry. So, you know, there's that. I've got some paintings on the side. i got a, the other paintings that I do that I don't stream on. Um, they're taking quite a long time. And that's okay. All right, so I'm just coming back and adding some black to these mountains to create more contrast. I think I'll add a little bit of that shadow this way. I think I'll also add some... Uh... So what do you guys think about that? Did you, would you like to... Do you think people should always be painting fast or what? It'd be interesting what other, other artists think. I know, like... No, it only takes like days to do paintings, and, and of course she charges. And yet, you know, she for what for as much work as she puts into it, she doesn't charge much of anything for it. So evidently, she loves what she's doing. I agree, Diane. I totally agree. Maybe I, I guess maybe you could paint it a little bit faster if you. Uh, a little more dark back here on this piece too, but not not a lot because it's kind of far off in the distance. Just put a couple in there here and there. Just a couple of things like that. All right. Yeah, I, maybe if uh, you sat down and sketched it all out and figured it all out, and, and you're just painting all wet on wet, then you could hurry. But I don't. People's attention span are just terrible. 
they're, they've gotten used to uh, Facebook and it's, you know, instant gratification videos, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. All right. Now we're going to start laying some landscaping here. All right. So any question about these mountains, though? Any, any part of the technique that you have a question about? So we created a bunch of different contrasts. We created both in colors and in, in rock formation by changing up color the color scheme. Selfie. Yeah, I don't paint acrylics. I, I, pull, I tinker around with them, but I don't know. I, I, I guess uh, I started off oil painting. I, I just like oil painting the best. So I may do a little bit of acrylic background work when I'm, but by and large, I don't. I don't do acrylics. So. I don't, I don't know that if I did, <clears throat> I would have room for paintings because it, it it, I don't think it would take me, since painting dry, paint dries real fast, I think I would probably go through scads of paintings every day, probably. I don't get to paint, well, I could paint every day because I'm retired, so I could do whatever I want to do. <laughs> but a couple other things I like to do too, I, I write books, I write novels, I have books on Amazon and I have to answer fan mail when people write to me. I always try to make sure I answer that. So, I like the garden. I like to work with my kerosene lamps and all that good stuff. All right, let's start putting some, some more something in here. Let's put some more trees. Put some trees in here. So let's put. Let's get some sap green. And a little bit of burnt umber. Let's kind of. Hmm. I tell you what, let's do. Let's let's put these, let's put these kind of trees in. Let's do that. So we're just tapping the edge, using this edge of the very edge of the fan brush. We're just tapping these trees in. We need some, a little bit more burnt umber in this set. There we go. Hang on, I'll look at the monitor here in a second. We were right in the middle of the conversation and I started painting these trees. <laughs> yeah. You want to kind of don't don't go them all straight across like they're in a telephone pole because I. A bunch of telephone poles. We don't want that. Guess we'll use up the most all the whole canvas today. All right, then we're just going to kind of add some color, pull this color down, get a little bit of green into that, just a little bit. All right, uh, pull that color down. We'll use it for some some more stuff later. All right. I didn't get it clean. How did it get unlined up? Here we go. Let me wait and see it before it comes back up on the monitor. Imogene, where you been? You're still driving home though, right? So, I'd rather you be safe. All right, let's fix the, up these reflections a little bit. So we're just gonna pull them down a little bit more. Really all we're doing is just making the reflections a little bit softer. A little bit softer. Maybe we'll try to str straighten them a little bit too. Here we go. That's better. All right. We'll just pull it across. Turn them into reflections. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you, Emily. I just wanted to stick like a bunch of mountains in there today. Uh, some people like have had have had quite a few questions lately about mountains, so I thought I'd just do. It. Then I started making them, and I couldn't stop. <laughs> All right, let's put some a little bit of landscape in here. So let's get let take some Van Dyke Brown. Now let me talk about this technique because I don't know a lot of people that do it this way. So Bob Ross, for instance, when he let me show you. Bob Ross puts in stuff on his landscapes, like this, on those far distance things like that. Try to get off the glare. He kind of pulls it like this. And I do that quite often, but when I'm doing landscapes in the distance, I find it better to push, put the knife down flat like this, and push it and kind of wiggle it like that. It creates more of an uneven boundary, for, I think. For me, at least it does. And so it look, I think it looks a little bit more natural. So let's do that. So we're kind of keeping, we're just making sure we keep the knife horizontal. And we're kind of moving it up and down the canvas. And the reason that we're doing that is because every time we go back, every time we go up, we're going back. Every time we come toward the, closer to the front, we're moving closer to us, so. And keep your knife loaded. Put it up there. I'm kind of pulling a little bit of water toward it. I'm going to move a little bit of landscape here toward us a little closer. All right. We, you know, we could have put a little bit more mist in there if we wanted to, and it pushed it probably pushed it back even farther, but that, that wasn't what I was going after. So let's, let's clean this knife off. Paper towel. Pick up a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm just going to kind of go over the top of that really lightly. And create some contrast between that. So now I created this little island out here kind of by accident, but it's okay. We'll do that. We'll keep it out there. <clears throat> so here, you can see as I pull it across, if you look here, you can see that I'm picking up color on the knife. You can never hear me. I don't know why. I don't know why. My microphone's like right next to my head. So... And I have a big old head, so it should echo pretty darn good. All right. All right, there we go. All right, now let's add some water lines, shall we? So now we're just gonna add some titanium white along this edge. Create some water lines. Ugh, gotta get that brown. Do it again. Now you can a good technique for water lines. You can, you can cut it straight in and get a pretty good water line like this. Or you can kind of push it, push on it when you do. And when you do, it kind of makes it look like a, like the water's coming off the shallows, you know, coming in on the thing. All right, now what? So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we're ten levels in, so that's pretty good. All right. Let's do some things now. Let's see. How about a cabin? Should we put a cabin in? Why not? So let's just get some. Let's just lay some color in here. Because 
doesn't really matter too much. We're just gonna put some under color, color kinds of stuff here. All right, so let's have a quiz, let's say. Or at least some thoughts about a quiz. Let me cover, cover this in. So we're going to put in a cat. Okay, Bruce. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alright, I'll stop for a minute and have a drink. And then we'll press on. Alright, so now we got to start kind of making up a story. Once upon a time kind of a thing. All right, so once upon a time, these people lived out in the mountains near this near this island near this peninsula. That'll work. All right. So let's, we're going to put a cabin on one of these things. I'm not sure which one I want to put it on yet, but let's do the background. Let's pull up some darker, some of this dark color, like kind of create little weeds and stuff along the shoreline. That might help to pick up a little bit more paint. Yeah, there we go. We'll grow some weeds. They haven't cut the grass and gosh knows when. This thing will be here. start thinking about put some trees out that way create some water line the landscape and over here we would like to stick a cat so here here's the thought this is, this is what I want to talk about so what do you guys what's your opinion if you put a smaller cabin here it makes the mountains look closer but if you put a larger cabin here it makes the mountains look farther away that's what I think what do you think do you think do you agree with that do you think that was how it, how it would do? Come on, you guys have an opinion. I know you do. While you're doing that, I'm going to put in a tree. This cabin has a tree near it. <laughs> All right. Hey John, you agree? The bigger that it is, the farther away that would look. All right, so let's put a pretty good sized tree. In. Let's put it. Well, we can't. We can only put so much because the trees have to kind of match the cabin a little bit. But well, we got this color. Let's go ahead and put another couple trees over here. That's a, that's a twisty tree. <laughs> that's okay. I like twisty trees. All right. All right, let's think about this cabin. Let's do that. Let's, let's figure out where the cabin's gonna go and we can kinda hoof it from there. So I'm going to be like Emily here, I'm going to paint, I'm going to sketch this in with paint. <laughs> it's funny because I'm just teasing her because she said earlier in the week she said, I want to do like Ben and just sketch this in with paint. 
Wait, do I do that? And I got to thinking about it. I was like, I guess I do. All right. So what do you think? Is that about the right size? Yeah. So what do you guys think? Do we want to drop like a some snow in on this cabin, or do we want to have it be a different time of year? Like more like springtime. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. All right. So there we go. And then maybe like right here. We'll do some more with that in a second. We're just trying to figure out where everything's going to go now. Move around the painting a little bit. All right, let's go. Let's take a script liner. Uh, maybe some of this. a little boat in here, what do you say? There's not a lot of medium right there on that part of the canvas, so let's do a little more. A little more touch and go with the script liner. All right, that'll do. That'll get us going. And for right now, I'm just going to leave that sit there because this is going to be darker on the inside. Well, I guess I could just go ahead and paint it darker. Why not? We can come back and highlight it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Now we can now we can mess around some more. Let's do Let's put, let's put some shingles on the cabin to start with. So we'll just kind of do that with a knife. Didn't get a very good, didn't get a very good pull right there. So we're just kind of tapping it on here. Then we'll start to pull this down over here. This is the lightest, lighter side of the cabin, right? Based on the mountains. Then we'll darken it up on the other side. <laughs> Not worried about the bottom of the cabin. We'll come back and fix that in a second. Come forward just a little bit. There we go. Oh, thank you, Angie. We're just kind of messing around right now. All right. Okay. So hmm, let's put a little bit of highlight here and there. Reverse highlight and highlight, so we finally got to throw that paper towel away. <laughs> All right, so first let's put the reverse highlight on. So let's put the dark in under the eaves, like that. Put some dark over there under the eaves. 
You can do that with a script liner too, by the way. Let's put a let's take a little bit of this dark and pull into this light. Let's kind of make this a little bit yeah, rustic looking like that. Just doing it with a knife. Just doing it with a knife. Alright. Now that we've got it kind of the way we want it, we'll just kind of push it back against the canvas. We'll just come in here and make a little bit of a cabin after me here. There we go. Just square it off the way we want it. Alright, let's do some highlighting, some more reverse, well, some detail work. Let's do a little bit of detail work. So right here, I already had kind of a little bit of a square, so let's just kind of paint this window in here. You guys watch Chuck Black on YouTube. He actually does this with a, he does all of his windows and doors and everything with, with a T-square to make sure they're all straight. And I just, I find it amazing. I think probably if I use a T-square, mine still wouldn't be straight, so I don't try to make them straight. Alright, pick the door in here. Paint the door in here. We've got to have some way to get into the cabin. Here we go. And let's just kind of smooth this out a little bit. Square it up. It's a little bit too much. Too, a little too dark right there. All right, and if I start talking about it too much, all right, y'all tell me. Because I start talking too quiet sometimes. I get, I get the, mostly wrapped up in the painting here. And I just kind of get quiet. a little bit of border around this door. You can do this with a knife too. I'm just not, I just happen to have the script liner in my hand, so I'm just doing it with a script liner. There we go. Let's put just a little bit, we'll pick up a little bit more paint. Put a little bit of highlight down the side. On the edge. And maybe just a little bit on this edge. I don't pick up too much paint. A little bit right across there. All right. Okay. Now let's do a little bit on. We'll put the landscape in in a second. Let's do the boat. Let's get the boat out of the way. So I'm gonna. I want this boat to be kind of, uh, kind of a weathered red looking color. So let's see how that goes. Well, first of all, let's see if I can just do it without adding any thinner. Probably not, because that paint's pretty thick right there. But let's see. I don't know, it looks pretty good. Alright, let's pull it out. There we go. Now, that boat, well, let's put the landscape in. But what we want to make sure we do is put something in front of that boat before we get done. Just to push it back into the painting or whatever. All right, let's put some land. Let's put some land in. How do we want to do that? This is, we could put it in with a fan brush or we could put it in with a one inch brush. Uh, let's see. Let's do it with a. kind of make it kind of springy. So let's just kind of tap some in here. So we're just using sap green and right now. Just pure sap green. <laughs> like that. We're just adding color to the canvas. I'm going to come back and highlight in a second. There we go. I'm going to tap that up around that boat a little bit. There we go. Just a tap, tad more sap, sap green on this side. Just to kind of make that more landy, landy looking. All right. Now, 
And one interesting thing we could do on this side, I hadn't thought about it until just now, but it happens a lot when I'm painting. I didn't think about it until just now. Um, maybe we can make like a, a little bit of a raised, like a cliff face kind of looking thing. And then have it set into the water like that. That'd be kind of cool. Let's do that. Let's try it anyway. So let's take some Payne's Gray. Nice dark color. Payne's Gray. And we'll just put it on here and we'll pull it down like that. More of kind of like that. There we go. So instead of the island just floating in the water, it would be like on a kind of on a cliff face. Let's put some highlight to that. All right. And then we'll pull, let's see, well, we'll pull some of that down into the water. Maybe I should have made it a little bit, I don't know, let's, put, let's make it a little bit longer. And then let's add a little bit of scotch, some black in there just to make it look more, you know, craggy looking. There you go. All right. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Not how I love to paint so much. All right. <laughs> Let's take, pull some of this down, make shadows, make a reflection, I mean. Take, I need some more sap green. Let's take a little bit of sap green. We're just got a little bit of sap green to the top there. But as I as I add the sap green in, I want to make that cliff cliff face kind of more uneven like that. See how can you see how it's more fuzzy that way? All right. I don't know if fuzzy is the right word, but blurred. I don't know if blurred is the right word either. All right, let's take and start doing some highlighting. Let's do some, let's get some cad yellow. Oh man, look, my cad yellow is almost empty. I get to open a new tube next time. All right, let's some cad yellow. I'm actually throw this tube away. Wow. Awesome. And let's just take a little bit of um, liquid white to thin this out. So I'm going to put this on these trees, and over here the, the trees are sitting on four layers of paint, so uh, I'm going to make sure it's going to stick. So we'll just make it, a, we'll just thin it just a little bit with a little bit of liquid white. Now, the way to do that and make sure that you get it right is tap, when you're putting it, take your brush, and the, take your liquid white, and, and put it in the cad yellow, and then tap it like this. And when your paint has gotten to where it's it's in peaks, it stands up in little peaks, that's usually, that's a great sign that you probably got it just right. All right. All right, all right, all right. So let's see. Lights this way. All right, so let's just, so we'll do the light on this tree first. Now I want to add a little bit of sap green to that because I don't want quite that color yellow. I'm going to start to put the landscape in like that. Yeah, there we go. So let's kind of stand this up some first. Then we can kind of tap the rest of this in. Let's do it all with a fan brush. I'm just tapping with the edge of the fan brush and just pushing. Pushing it, push, 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 just like that. The more you tap it, the more it'll, the softer it'll be. All right, so pull up a little bit on this side. 
you see, I picked up, you can see how small the edge of the brush, can you see where that darker color is? That's where we're, that's how light we're tapping. So we're just gonna wipe, we don't need to clean the brush, we just need to wipe it off like that. Wipe the color off, wipe the dark color off. Pick that color back up that I had. Because if you get your colors too bright, they're gonna look too gaudy. You don't want that. Tap a little bit down on this, on this cliff face to make that look like it's growing down over the edge. All right, now let's add just a little bit of highlight to the boat. And maybe I think we'll get ready to... Uh-oh, Emily's losing signal. Okay, sorry, kiddo. She lives, in, she lives out in the country. So, all right, let's see. Let's get, let's say six, six, six some liquid white. I'm just gonna pick up some liquid white. I'm really honestly, I think I'm gonna pick some up. There we go. Oh gosh, now I got too much. All right. And I'm just gonna lightly mix that with this blue color that we use on the mountains. I'm gonna use this to highlight the edge of the boat. Just, just a little. We're just lightening the inside, making it look kind of, you know, better. All right, I need a little bit more of that. I need just a tad, tad more of that for the back. Okay. Now we could stop there. We could. Um, and it, the painting would be just fine. But I think I think I want to add a few over here on this side. I want to add a few. I want to, mm. Oh, you know what? I want to put some water on there. I think I might want to add. I don't know if I want to add something over there or not. Now that I'm thinking about it. But let's we'll figure it out in a second. Let's add some water lines on this part. Like that. Don't need to get too crazy with the water lines, but. Pretty good representation of water lines. No, I, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. We won't have to put any other water lines in there. And maybe, 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 maybe. We'll just kind of make those crash up on the shore like that. There we go. I, I like that. All right, now I need a little bit of a water line right there on the edge of the boat. To finish, kind of finish this up. Let's pick a little bit of, a little bit up on the knife. A little bit of a water line right there at the edge of the boat. Just at the edge. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's probably it. We look at it for a second. Just put a, a little pad of highlight on this side of the house, right here on this edge. Just not a really bright light, but just a little bit right there. Yeah, and then we can kind of a little bit of highlight along this edge like that, just to make that stand out a little better, or maybe along this way too. Just a little bit. All right. Yeah. Okay, gang. Knife down. I think that's it. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Angie, Bruce, Billy, Emily, everybody else that jumped in, John. Appreciate you guys spending your day with me. I, I know everybody's always busy. And it does my heart good to see you guys. Really, seriously, it does. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for spending time with me. Be sure to check out the other videos in my library. And, uh, oh, before we go, I'm going to give away a painting. Hang on a second. Let me go get it.
All right. Yeah. So this is the painting we're going to give away. It is called something or other. I don't know. Oh, I dropped the paper wherever it was. All right, that's okay. I'll put the put the name on it when I lift the announcement. All you got to do is win this painting is like and share this thing. You get one chance for each like and sh each share. So if you like it and share it, for each share you get a chance at, and you can only like it once, but anyway. Anyway, this is a, what is this, 11 by 14? Yeah, it's 11 by 14 on a uh, black canvas. So we will be announcing the winner for this tomorrow. Uh, you can win more than once, so Originally, the first year, I thought, no, oh, no, if you already won one, you can't win another one. But you can. So, hey, be sure to do it and watch for your announcement. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.